It's been a while since I made any pins, and if you were recently watched my corn cob bowl video and said that I probably should make another corn cob pin. So actually, I'm going to make two. I'm going to make a Sierra style, and I'm going to make a slimline. So I'm going to get these blanks prepped up. I got to drill them, glue the tubes in, and then I will uh, get them on the lathe and get them turned. First thing I need to do is drill the, the blank out. So I'm doing this with a 7 millimeter drill bit. I find if I do this on the lathe I get a better cut and a more accurate cut. Now these corn cobs have been stabilized with cactus juice. So wood stabilizer. The hole looks good on both sides. Now we'll do the other blank. That one looks good as well. See? And that came out pretty good. Looks good on both ends. So now we'll get these glued up and tomorrow after the glue cures I'll come back and we'll get them turned. I've got to wait till tomorrow because I'm out of five minute epoxy. I don't even have any 30 minute epoxy. And I hate using super glue on these because I've had them fail. So I've got them glued up and I took them over to my drill press and used my pen mill and got the ends nice and flush. So now I'm going to use my Sierra bushings and these are standard Sierra bushings. The only difference is I chucked them up in a collet chuck and I used a center drill that machinists use. It's a 60 degree center drill and I drilled these out so that they fit this 60 degree live or dead center and this 60 degree live center. I do all of my pins between centers anymore. I do not use a mandrel. Doesn't take much pressure. Right now I'm just getting it round, seeing what it's going to look like. I do it this way because when I have a, a semi-soft blank like the corn cob, because this is kind of soft and a little bit brittle, if you come flush from, if you float the bevel uh, from the bushing up here, you can get some chip out, and I don't want any of that. <laughs> I was toying with the idea of putting some dye on this. Uh, I'm, I still may. I haven't decided. Jury's still out. I'm going to leave a little bolt right there. I'm not happy with all those holes. So before I, I'm going to take some brown medium thick star bond. This tells you, you, you click, the, click the link in the description below and you'll get 20% off your order.
Now I'll wait a half hour or so and let this cure up good and I'll come back and peel that off. I may apply a dye to this once I finish sanding. I have made up my mind. Start at 220, that's really smooth. For some reason, it's darker up here. I'll let that dry for a little while. It won't take long because it's alcohol. That blue might have taken a little bit better had I done the dye before I did the brown CA. But it gives it an interesting look nonetheless. But that's where we are right now. A slimline black in. Every now and then I'll do a slimline the traditional way, but I hate skinny pins. So this is how I do a slimline. What I did was I put a washer on this bushing that's the size that I want this end to be. This will be the bottom. A slightly bigger washer that I will put on the bottom of the top pit barrel. It's called a modified slim line. A lot of stuff to fill in this one. And I'm gonna fill this with black because I'm gonna hit this with some black Indian ink before I do the CA. Well, work better than the blue. Now, like before, I will let this set up for a few minutes because I just hardened the surface, but I need to let it cure underneath and that's gonna take a little while. It's been a few minutes now, let's see what we got. Still got holes, so I gotta do it again. All the holes are filled. Now I'm going to hit it again. So I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes and then I'll sand it back with 400 one more time. Fifteen minutes, let's try this again. Start at 220. Go to 400. I thought this time I got rid of all the holes. I did not.
Okay, so this will go together like this. This will be the end that you hold. This will be the end with the pocket clip on it. There's only one thing I got left to do to this, and that's around this off because you don't want that sharp or rough edge. This one can be sharp because it's going to be flush to here, but this one needs to be rounded. And I should be able to do that by just sanding. <laughs> Okay, that's better. Now it's not so abrupt, it's got a bit of a shape to it. So that will be just fine. I've got the chipmunks turned down because they they're hassling me, but that's okay. I love them. All right, so if you've seen any of my pen turning videos where I do a finish, you'll you'll know that my favorite go-to finish for all pens is lacquer, and it's Deft Gloss Brushing Lacquer. But I don't brush it, and I don't spray it. I dip it. And I know y'all are thinking, you are crazy. But I get a better finish this way than anything I've ever tried before. So what I will do is I will take each pen blank and I will simply dip it till it's fully covered and let it drain. And you notice I've got bushings at the top of these or at the top and bottom of this pen blank. That allows the lacquer to flow freely off of the pen blank. If you don't put a bushing the same size as what you're working on, then what happens is you'll you'll have a little ridge or puddle build up at the bottom or at the top. And I don't like that because then you have to buff it off or sand it off and then rebuff and it's a pain to butt. So I do this and I get a nice smooth flow all the way down. And in order to get an even finish, I will dip it this way one time. I'll wait 30 minutes, I'll come back, flip it over, dip it again, and I do that four times for a total of four coats. And I always get a, an impeccable finish on my pens. I was afraid of that. I was afraid of that. I'm going to have to dip this one and turn it over. But that's okay. And yeah, it wastes a little bit of lacquer. It puddles up down on the board. Especially if you don't let it drain long enough like I didn't on this one. That one might work. Yeah, I can get that one in there. And you want them standing as straight up as possible. That way you don't get lacquer running over to one side. Now I'll set my timer at 30 minutes and I'll come back when it's ready to flip. So what I'll do is I will flip, dip, and 30 minutes later I'll flip, dip, 30 minutes later I'll flip, dip, and I'll let them set till tomorrow before I take them out. But I will let these sit actually for at least five days to fully cure before I assemble the pen. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. I didn't like what I was using for a bushing on this end of this pen. So I took a, a slimline center band that I won't be using and put it on there because that's the perfect diameter because it is a slimline and it is turned to that dimension. 
So you notice I flipped it, dipped it, Same with this one. And this one. And I'll come back when they're done because I'm, there's no point in me showing you the same process two more times. I will flip and dip twice more today and then I will let them sit here to dry at least overnight, maybe a little bit longer. And when I'm ready to take them off of these dip mandrels, then I'll come back. Okay, it's been almost 24 hours since I did dip my last coat. Now what I want to do now is, before this lacquer gets too hard, and it will harden up more and more over the day, over the next couple of days, I want to score with a sharp knife, I want to score just below the, the separation line between the blank and the bushing. Just score a little groove, because what you do this because you want to give the lacquer an easy separation point. Otherwise, you run the risk of, and it's just a risk, I've had it happen before, uh, you run the risk of fracturing the lacquer up onto the pin barrel, and then you're left with a chip, and it doesn't look very good. So, which means you have to start over. So if you just score a little line, you're not really making a cut, you're just rolling the, the knife edge around the blank. Now I'll do that on all three of them. See, it broke loose from this bushing just fine. Break loose from this one fine as well. And it did. You can see by doing that, it left a nice crisp edge, but it also, there's some lacquer that was on the other. And so it's up because it chipped off of the, the bushing. And if you don't do it that way, you run the risk, because see there it is more chipped from the bushing. That's easy to trim because it's still relatively soft. The easiest way to do it is to knife and run around the edge and trim it off. That way you're not, I would avoid using a barrel trimmer because you can chip the lacquer. And, and it'll stay relatively soft for a day or a day and a half. So that's what the slim line is going to look like when it's together. I think it's interesting. So now I will put these in a safe place and, and I will let them cure for a good five days before I put the pins together, before I assemble them. I don't know if you've noticed I'm being very gentle with how I'm handling these. I don't want to risk uh, damaging this lacquer. Like I said, you saw how easily it peeled off with the knife. It, uh, it's still really soft and and it could be damaged rather easily. Look at that. Look at that Sierra blank. I think that is a really wild look. Very snaky like. Doesn't look anything like a corn cob, does it? In a five days or so, I'll come back and finish this video. We'll put these pins together. It's been almost exactly a week since I dipped these two blanks. So it's time to put it together. I don't have a pen press. I don't need a pen press because I turned these two blocks to fit perfectly on the quill of my old, my Delta midi lathe and the headstock. And I put this Corian on here and it works just fine. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the nib end we're going to put that in here. Tail stock is locked. And just keep it aligned and push it together. 
Doesn't take a lot of pressure. You just need to make sure it's fully seated. Next thing you want to do is take the twist mechanism and you want to seat it. Typically you take it to that line, but I'm going to go just a little shy. I'm going to put the refill in and it doesn't quite come out enough, so I need to take it in again. The reason for the test is to make sure that you get it the right depth, otherwise you have to take it apart and fix it. So I took it to the line. And that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. So that barrel is done, and the only thing left to do is put the, the clip end in. And I like to examine my blank and put the clip over. There's not an ugly part on here, but I like to put the clip over what it would be the ugliest part of the pin. And this doesn't really have one, so I'm going to put it about right there. Make sure the clip's not loose so it's tight enough. And if you're working on a wood blank or a wood pin, you want to line up the, the grain. There's not really any grain in this one, so I'm going to line it up like this. And you can see it goes on fully without having to use a center band. And it still functions as it should. So there's one corn cob modified slim line. Now, this Leroy pin goes together pretty easily. It's Sierra-like, but it's a little fancier. I turned this end a little thicker, so I'm gonna put the nib in down here. You wanna put the nib in first, press it in, so we'll get this set up. Just like that. I'm gonna put the clip right there, and we wanna press the clip in. And again, you don't want the clip loose. Then you drop the refill and spring in and you screw the transmission down into that and press the cap on. And there you have a Leroy Elegant twist pin. So here they are. I'll put some stills up at the end. An interesting look, I think. Very interesting look. And they work like they're supposed to. And these will be up on my website in a few days for anybody that might be interested. And just look at the finish. I mean, that you can see the glare, the shiny that that dipping method gives these. It's just, you just can't beat it. And it's nice and hard. It's a good, strong finish it'll last a long time. Mm -hmm.